On one side of the Pacific Ocean lies China, on the other, Nicaragua. So what has been linking them for more than 15 years? A shared vision of developing an inter-oceanic alternative to the Panama Canal. China and Nicaragua really started building in the 2010s despite all the difficulties of creating such a route. But for different reasons, things stalled and right. Though the Panama Canal remains the sole route from the Pacific to the Atlantic, just when everyone assumed China and Nicaragua had abandoned the notion of competing with one of the major trade routes of the world, another project appears. One that could possibly take a piece of the trade pie from the Panama Canal. Time to see what sort of project has now emerged from the China-Nicaragua. Long before the most recent ideas on digging a canal through Nicaragua, there were many suggested routes. Over here, the most reasonable planned canals are marked in different colors. But sometimes, things reach the level of truly absurd. It's the 1960s. The Cold War is in full swing. People are coming up with all sorts of strange ways to use atomic energy. The USR and the US are conducting hundreds of tests. Then comes the plowshare program where nuclear explosives were suddenly being considered for peaceful applications. So what does an inner oceanic canal through Nicaragua have to do with all this? Well, in the US, they thought they could blast out a new waterway through Nicaragua using nuclear explosions. The idea was certainly thrilling. But as the test revealed constructing things with nuclear charges was not exactly popular among ordinary people. That's why both the plowshare thing and the nuclear canal concepts were shelved. The 2000s arrived. The notion of an inter-oceanic link ignited with renewed vigor. At the very beginning, a plan was put forth to connect Nicaragua's coasts with a railroad, essentially a dry canal, but they lacked the money. The Nicaraguan government suggested in 2004 constructing a canal capable of handling post panamiac ships with a displacement of up to 250,000 tons in comparison to roughly 65,000 tons the Panama Canal could accommodate. Environmentalists first became really involved then. They decided the jungles and rivers would sustain severe damage. The project would have been way too much to handle since the cost was estimated at $25 billion, which is 25 times more than Nicaragua's annual budget. Later, there were a few more ideas for the canal with some small changes, but none of them led to anything. Then in 2012, the Chinese got involved with the idea of a new connection between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans through Hong Kong. Nicaragua Canal Development Group, or HKND, and you know what? In December 2014, HKND announced the start of construction in Revis, Nicaragua. Yeah, for the first time, the concept of an inter-oceanic canal began to materialize. The plan wasn't much different from what had already been suggested, but that didn't diminish its grandeur the nations involved in the cooperation. At the same time, they intended to conduct large-scale dredging operations in the country's main reservoir since it was not deep enough for large ships to pass through. They wanted to build three sections totaling 172 miles, part of which would run through Lake Nicaragua. Now, and the lock had to be made appropriate. Next, ships pass through the rest of the canal. Canal and the lock appropriate as well. Furthermore, two new ports had to be built, one on the Pacific coast and the other on the Caribbean eye. The most crucial factor was that the intended capacity of the new ports had to be one. 67, 67, and two. Five million TEU or 20 feet containers per year respectively, which would be enough to make the new canal in Nicaragua a real competitor to the Panama Canal HKMD, described their project as the largest civil operation in history in terms of moving earth. The bulk of the project would consist of dry excavation, with an estimated 142 billion cubic feet of rock and soil. In addition to that, there were plans for 26 billion cubic feet of freshwater dredging in the country's biggest lake and eight. 5 billion cubic feet of work in the sea, 50,000 personnel would be needed, and the construction was projected to last five years, during which two concrete plants and one steel plant would be erected to make the canal. The enormity of the whole thing is truly incredible, however, too. Years later in 2016, when there should have been at least some progress, it was reported that no significant construction tasks had been completed under the Chinese project and some ports plan dredging work had started and some sand silt and other things from the bottom had been lifted. However, the planned mega works never happened in the same year. It was discovered that at the spot HKND chairman Wang Jing held the official opening ceremony, cows are still grazing on the field. There were no large scale works happening at all. Millions of tons of sand were still lying where they were and they continue to lie there despite all the loud promises that in the next five years, the country and the whole world would get a new competitor to the Panama. Canal, why the reasons are pretty simple, the Chinese company, particularly its billionaire chairman, ran out of money to continue the work. Besides, when you really think about it, pulling off such a project comes with a ton of problems. The Nicaraguan Academy of Sciences pointed out that hundreds of thousands of acres of untouched forests and wetlands will literally be destroyed. And by the way, it's home to animals like Beard's Taper or the monkey. They call the spider monkey. 
These animals, along with a bunch of other species, including 22 endangered ones, were supposed to lose their habitats because of the canal. The largest source of fresh water in Nicaragua is the lake of the same name. They decided to dig it up for the construction of a canal. Naturally, this can't happen without some changes to the environment and, of course, to the water quality that millions of Nicaraguans use for drinking. If we leave ecology aside, building a new canal would have led to the forced relocation of about 120,000 people, including the Rama and Creole communities from protected indigenous territories on the Caribbean coast. This all turned into serious public outrage, which quickly grew into protests against the new canal projects. So do you get the idea, right? It sounds like it's probably for the best that the Chinese company ran out of money for this project because resistance from so many people would have been inevitable. But did China stop after the failure? Of course, not the country is constantly expanding its influence through the Belt and Road Initiative, so it turned its attention to Nicaragua once more as a result, a direct sea trade route from China to the port of Corinto on Nicaragua's Pacific coast was established and large-scale projects with China and Nicaragua are still on the table once the trade route was set up. China signed a memorandum of understanding with the Nicaraguan government to modernize and improve one of the country's biggest ports, Perinto. It's another attempt to rival the Panama Canal, even though it doesn't involve building something as massive as the interoceanic route planned earlier. Of course, in terms of scale, it's still a far cry from the canal between the two oceans. The work will be carried out over an area of just one. 7 million square feet. However, this doesn't take away from the complexity and the positive effects that both countries will ultimately benefit from. So the work in this area will include the construction of two multi-purpose docks, in addition to the already existing batch of equipment from its Tenzin port for a project in Nicaragua, but creating a multifunctional system that can effectively receive ships they need to arrive quickly, unload or load, and then head off to their to be equipped with the latest technology. This is where China comes in having ship decision makers particularly highlight the construction of a logistics center, which will become part of the sea terminal. It's said that this will be an important addition to the new docks and the rest of the port infrastructure as it'll help streamline operations and make them more efficient by reducing the service time for importers and exporters. Apart from that, two new high-performance cranes and tugboats will be added to the port, which will ensure greater safety of port operations and improve the efficiency of servicing incoming vessels. But all of this needs to be managed. That's why a proper center will be built where management and monitoring tasks will take place and also, how can we forget about dredging any kind of upgrade, especially close to the Panama Canal, is really aiming to outdo the connection between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. The plan suggests Corinto won't get away from this. Either people by the shore will spot ships moving sand from the bottom to other spots. Dredging work is usually something that needs to be controlled. The thing is sand silt or something else tends to fill in the place that was carefully Dredge to avoid this, they usually build breakwaters. Yes, the name of the structure suggests that its purpose is to protect from waves, but besides that, they also act as a barrier for sand, preventing it from being washed back in. Now, take a look at where the Corinto port is located. It's almost entirely protected by natural barriers. Looks like even nature is in favor of this port. Existing and being able to accept large container ships. Now, let's break down why this upgrade matters for China and Nicaragua. First of all, the Pacific port of Corinto will be able to handle more cargo, which will enhance trade between the two nations. In recent years, Corinto has carried three, five million tons of cargo each year, according to the ministers of Nicaragua. Once the repair is completed, the port will be able to handle seven. 5 million tons of cargo, meaning its operational capacity will double. They claim that after the upgrading, the port will be able to accommodate larger boats from more distant latitudes, which will form a base for enhancing conditions for domestic industry high ranking. Officials also mentioned that products will leave the port in better condition. In a shorter period of time, they'll reach destination markets fresher with higher quality. All of this, of course, means positive effects for the country. Look at this. The port is located not far from the border with Honduras, so this country could definitely use Corinto for its trade purposes. Yes, Honduras has its own Pacific port called San Lorenzo, through which the country already trades with China. However, as of 2021, the port's capacity barely exceeded 1 million tons of cargo per year. Therefore, if trade volumes with China increase significantly, Honduras may face the choice either upgrade San Lorenzo or simply bring goods to the nearby Corinto and Nicaragua. The probability that Honduras will be accepting and sending goods through the modernized port in the neighboring country is definitely there. This is an advantage for Nicaragua because it can make money from it. Sounds like Quinto has some good prospects, doesn't it? Also, Nicaragua's ministers believe that thanks to the modernization, the port has serious potential to become one of the main transport hubs in Central America with the increase in capacity and the ability to handle post-Panamax container ships. Many countries could establish their own routes through Quirinto. Do you think the idea of building a canal through Nicaragua 
If China's help's finally done for well, looks like they won't run out of ideas anytime soon, especially with the current leadership back in the early 2020s. The Panama Canal started facing issues as Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega has a new interoceanic link plan for China. This one's longer than the canal that was previously proposed, 276 miles. The plan is for the route to connect the deep water Atlantic port of Bluefields with the Pacific port of Corinto. The one that's supposed to be modernized, the width of the canal will range from 950 to 1770, and the depth of 88 feet, of course, will let post Panamax container ships go through. The president and his team clearly learned from all the dissatisfaction that came up during the earlier plans and the short lived construction work on the canal. Judging by this map, the proposed route won't go through Lake Nicaragua which means there won't be any need for dredging in the lake. However, according to this plan, the route now goes through a different lake, Lake Chalan or Managua. And you know there are some doubts that public opinion and environmentalists will suddenly feel any different just because they'll be digging through a slightly less significant body of water instead of the country's main lake that one also doesn't have the required depth of 88 feet. Its max depth is only 65 feet. Yes, yeah, some say Managua is the most polluted lake in Central America because the city's been dumping its sewage into it since 1927, even so a few fish still live there, so it's hard to imagine no pushback from both environmentalists and everyday people unless, of course, everyone buys into the promised benefits as claimed. This interoceanic canal will be more efficient than its Panamanian opponent when it comes to international shipping, which will strengthen Nicaragua's place on the global stage and get the country more involved in world trade. The route's projected to cost around $64. 5 billion, a large sum to say the least, especially for Nicaragua, still major figures engaged. In the project, say there are revenue estimates and outcome forecasts, so we're confident this new route is perfectly viable and profitable. So we'll be watching to see what comes of this attempt to run a canal through Nicaragua. At this point, no dates, no concrete info, just plans. But Nicaragua's history with these canal projects makes you think it's going to go the same way as before. However, China seems pretty serious about boosting its influence in Nicaragua. That's the impression you get, for instance, because there's a Chinese footprint in the highway project that's set to run pretty much along the whole Pacific coast of the country. This project isn't fully funded by China. Only $292 million has been allocated for the second stage of road construction. But even that shows China is in the game if the game's happening in Nicaragua. Once the highway's finished, it'll link communities on Nicaragua's Pacific coast, letting people cargo and everything else move quickly and comfortably between them at this point. Even though construction isn't done yet, the highway already cuts travel time from Monagua to areas like Papu by 40% other coastal. Attractions, small settlements, and major cities in Nicaragua are also getting a boost, but the most important thing is the new route will improve the connection between the Chinese Nicaraguan port of Corinto and other parts of the country. That means, for example, once the project is finished, you'll be able to load a certain product somewhere in the coastal farming areas. And quickly and without any major issues, take it to Corinto and send it off to China or bring in a product from China and then send it off to one of the coastal spots where it's needed. It's also claimed that the highway will pass through scenic coastal areas, offering stunning views and better access to some of Nicaragua's most beautiful beaches and natural attractions. And this is a boost for tourism, which is a win for the country's economy. As of August 2024, the northern and southern ends of the highway were in advanced stages. While work on connecting these areas through some of the toughest sections was still ongoing, there's a good chance that there will be certain changes to the route because, as it's stated, it's really important for the builders to preserve the coastal ecosystems and not harm the wildlife in any way. This could cause an outburst of outrage like what happened with the interoceanic canal in the 2010s. For this reason, there's no exact date for when the work will be finished, but what's certain is that the highway will definitely be useful for the country. Do you think the Chinese influence stops here? Of course, not China. We'll also be involved in the works for the military airport. No to the great disappointment of conspiracy theorists and news agencies, China won't be constructing a military airport and placing hundreds of planes there that'll someday take off and fly to the US. The Chinese company CMC Engineering will be responsible for upgrading the international airport of Pontate. Located 36 miles northeast of Managa from 1979 to 1990, it was the largest military facility in Nicaragua. That's the only connection the airport has to the military. The modifications as claimed are simply geared to help the airport handle more cargo and passengers. The target is three. 5 million passengers per year, yes, there's another international airport in Nicaragua, Augusto Candino in the capital, Managua. However, it's been operating for over 68 years and its capacity for expansion is limited. 23 units of equipment and machinery arrived from China for the modernization during the opening of the new route between China and Corinto. No military presence overall the country's development with China's help is moving ahead full steam. It's quite probable that the inter- 
Oceanic Canal will be finished after all. We just need to wait a little bit.